There's 104 days of summer vacation And school comes along just to end it So the annual problem for our generation Is finding a good way to spend it Like maybe So stick with us cause Phineas and Ferb Are gonna do it all So stick with us cause Phineas and Ferb Are gonna do it all Hey guys Beast Force here and welcome back to Phineas of Fur Breakdown. I want to say that it has been a great start. I always like an idea that YouTubers had to break down a series from another cartoon, but I'll do mine as well. We're also going to look at another episode of Phineas and Ferb and see if it's worth coming back to. The people remember the show for songs and entertainment. Let's see if it's fun to break them down and see if the fans remember it. The second episode is Long Gnome Beach Party of Terror, airing in September the 27th, 2007. Phineas and Fur build a huge paradise of a beach in their backyard on the hottest day of the year. Meanwhile, Agent P tries to stop Dr. Doofensmirt from stealing all Long Gnomes in the tri-state area in revenge for having to dress as one in his youth. On the hottest day of the summer, so let's you see the bird fly in the sun as the sun brightens and explodes with smoke. With the fire still being there. The beach, I say, take it easy and you can see that the tree is still in one piece after the roller coaster episode. Do nothing today. Yep, just flow the whole day. And Ferb, if we let Pete stop us from having the best day ever, it's the because it's DJ's summer. Win. Backyard. Oh, how cute. As they, as Ferb is putting more water in the sand, look how the shadow grows. Bigger, bigger, and bigger. He's finally cleaning up the basement. Bye, Mom. Yes, it makes me in charge. By the hand. Hey, where's Perry? I like how the smoke pops into two holes and then Perry lands and then look how quick frame by frame State area are disappearing. Leave it. We suspect Schmertz. Get right on it. You can be a landscape contractor. Yes, yes I am. Oh, hey Isabella. What you doing? Building a beach. Can me and the other fireside quiet safety badges? Sure. I mean, I've been a- so I should have invited to- This is like the first episode of Roller Coaster. Kansas just talks on the phone as Phineas and Ferb are doing something. Come to our- The two new Fireside Girls are Holly and Millie, but this isn't the first time we see Ginger and Katie as they both appeared on the Roller Coaster episode. Remember that? Beach. Ha! You're gonna have to stop playing. The tropical bird flying and the rainbow overlapping the sky and this beach looks good this is, Jenny? See, you have told you a beach in your backyard? this is Jenny and Stacy's first appearance on the show also the fact that Jenny is voiced by the same voice actress as Isabella and Stacy's voiced by Kelly who you're gonna be the most popular girl in the neighborhood I forgot, this is Perry the Platypus's first disguise, and it's a lawn gnome. And Doofus Works doesn't know makes the cut show more funny. Oh no! And that was the TV remote. Oh. Ah! <laughs> Turn your attention to the giant screen! Need to turn the cable on first? Doofus Works's stupidness makes the show funny. But why did you invent one button? to open the door or the traps. You should have added two or three buttons. This is the first episode we get to see Buford and the first song that is not the theme song is If Only Summer Lasts For One Day singer Danny Jacob. As, as Ferb is using the boat, look how the water when the boat is moving, overlapping, whilst Phineas is flying. It's your house from up here! We get to see Jeremy again. I paused it right there, and this is an animation error. I think the, they forgot to colour the flowers in her bikini. Uh -huh. 
You can see the five side girls, Buford, Jenny, Stacy, and Django. And this is the first appearance of Django. So that's how low you can Here comes the first ironic song on the scene. The singer is not Thomas, it is Danny Jacob who composes Phineas and Fur. And he's also the songwriter for this song as well as Dan Probermeyer. As Phineas is dancing, look at how the thing moves his eye, left, right, and back to left. As Ferb and the other dancers are dancing, look how the thing moves up and down, which is pretty good for the music. You got the and Paris Halen surfing in the nothing's up to reach. We got the backyard into the breach. Got the backyard beach. I've never been had a call from Candace, even a text message. Olga, oh host me down. I'm going home. As Perry's talking to Doofus Mutt, look how the colour change on his face when he put the torch light on. That is pretty good detail. Back. The colour is black as the lightning strikes and it changes when it goes off. Look, they use fast transition to pan down to Doof and his family. In times for my father and our beloved Lono was repost. My father decided that it would be me. Uh, oh, through Banyan was the moon. As Doof is waving to Kenny, his father appears in the shadow, and the moon is not even moving. Why? Lono was taken away from me. When I was young, I always thought this was story was funny, but then I realised this is priest, and that's why Doofus Mertz is evil, is because his parents are arseholes, and they don't really care about him. I like how Doofus caring about Vanessa, then his parents care about him. Lonom in the entire... Behold the destruction the reason why I have the second counter is because he didn't say a NATO in the first episode, but for me it counts because it's a NATO. But this is the first time in this episode on screen he called it a NATO. I really like the detail of that a NATO. Oh, you idiot! Out of my way, Jennifer. That's Buford. Phineas' nickname. No bullying, no yodeling. I don't like this anymore than you do. The person is surfing, and look how the water with the sea grows bigger that's just like in real life and then he gets taken down by Buford idiot here's Django and, here and he's gonna get beaten by Buford the judges and Buford doesn't like it one bit I realize the commentator is the same voice actor as Buford this is smart from Phineas look at Buford look at Phineas chilling there Buford attacks misses him got a um Hologram to protect him. Smart thinking from Phineas to make sure Buford doesn't touch him. The woman is holding the board is called a symbol. You know why? Maths. And the man who is the E equals MC2 is reference to Albert Einstein. Mass energy. Jeremy doesn't talk in this episode, despite Mitchell Musso voicing in this episode. The moment has arrived. Um, Candace. Wait, what? I'm right around the corner. Look how Candace throws her phone from nowhere. I don't know where it landed. Stay right there! I forgot that Candace doesn't try to bust her brothers in this episode. Look out, it's raining gnomes! Oh, run home again! Who's protecting our guard? That's Mitchell Musso. They said they're going to, but instead of just a cute little beach in their sandboxers and water skiers and tiki hats and dolphins. Oh. As the volcano started to suck in, look, look, look at them, these two confused. Look, a thing, water goes down, and. It sucks in, and the smoke can carries in there as the water drops. If you watch Phineas and Fur spot the diff, you, there's an other, there's the same scene, but Kim Possible is there. And if you watch it, she, you can spot her, and it will be hilarious. Movie from under the noses of our heroes. The war is becoming a vortex as many of the items falling into the water as a 
big bubble as the fork and it pops. Take off your really proud my kingdom. If you would just let me have my moment. I forgot that Diffie didn't say curse you Perry the Platypus, which is a shame. Hey Jeremy, it was all so beautiful! I feel so sorry for Candace in this episode. The slight chance of scattered law. I show you behind Perry's feet. You can see prints of Perry's foot as it goes into the shadow. As Perry falls down, as the parachute appears, and you see that as a logo of Perry the Platypus, as Phineas mentions it in the second dimension. This is like comic shop panels. Go Perry! The episode is done, now let's get on with the ranking. The plot, I'm gonna give it a 3. I know again that the plot is simple as it is, like roller coaster, but I like it. It's because it's not story driven. It's like Tom and Jerry when you see the same episode over and over again and you never get tired of it. This is another fun adventure of Phineas and Ferb, but this time building a beach in the backyard, which is cool. I'm not gonna lie, it is very strange that Candace doesn't try to bust her brothers in this episode and change it up for Candace to have fun, which really builds for future episodes of Candace helping her brothers instead of busting them. Characterization, I'm gonna give it a four. I like the idea that Candace is having fun, but she doesn't try to bust her brothers in it about the beach as she tries to protect it instead of showing mom something before it was gone. We also saw the first appearance of Buford, the Fireside Girls, Django, and more Jeremy after the first episode of Roller Coaster. As we get to know more, but I'm glad that he doesn't speak in this episode, despite Mitchell Musso voicing in this episode. I like when Doof is clueless when Perry's in the sky, as we get to see more in later episodes. I also like how Doof shows about his path, why did he become evil, why his parents did terrible things to him. That's what I want from a villain, past back stories all the trusty area and have fun dialogue. Visuals again, I'm gonna give it a 3. It is very good, don't get me wrong, but it still needs improvement as it did from the first episode when they used real life shots. The design looks way better than the first episode, as I like roller coaster, but they can improve the show as we can get to season 2, 3 and 4. It doesn't look off model except when Isabella wearing her beach clothes but still has a pink brow, which bothered me but not too much. There are a lot of many animation errors just like the last episode, as we see more later episodes but that's part of the show. Importance, I have to do this 5. I was really going to give it a 4, not every episode is important but when you see it connects together, that's the reason why. You can't skip this episode as it has many questions about the direction of the show. The introduction of Buford is important because he became Phineas and Ferb's friends throughout before Raging Bully. This is all, also the episode when we get to see Candace spending time with Jeremy. They are always been together forever in the series. This also includes Django who will become part of the sh episodes in the future as an artist but we'll get there. Don't forget Doofus Merck's flashback of why he became evil because of his parents as we're going to see more of the past in the future as Perry in disguise won't be a miss. I have to give her a 5 because Laurel's well because of it and for the future episode. The song Backyard Beat became part of the musical clip of Countdown as number 2 as for me it's not important but to the creators and the show it is. Entertainment it's a 5. You watch my reactions it's very good and brilliant to watch. Just like the first episode the action takes a backseat. Don't get me wrong I like storytelling but I love adventures of building, fighting, creative and many more instead of driving story that is boring and kind of dull but Phineas and Ferb doesn't have that at all to entertain adults and kids to watch it. Songs are very good again as it is just like the roller coaster episode that's gonna leave a 20 out of 25. Let's wrap up with our final thought. 
there are points that I haven't pointed out on this video is from the episode onwards Phidias voices a Fosato although it isn't notable until Jerk the Soil first appearance of Buford this is the first episode is also the few ones with his last name during the surfing contest he is pronounced Von Storm but is later changed to Van Stamp. Although the second preview episode, this is the last episode premiere in 2007 for US as Candice loses her head. Premiered in Germany on New New November 1st, 2000, and Flop Stars premiered in Latin America on December the 31st, 2007. There are this episode is a treat to watch. They really show how well it does for entertainment and fun, not just the sh airing over 14 years. And there are the early episodes of the show. When I was young, I always thought the episodes are as there are more cooler episodes to come, and I want to see all the fun adventures of the show. The animation is good as well as there are many animation errors that are a lot to point out to you. become a lot of the show some didn't because of the story two episodes are great to start of the show fun comedic moments songs fighting scenes adventures and many more we're looking forward to in future episodes comment below the scene is your favorite backyard beach deuce flashback in your surfing harry in disguise as a dog or candace and Joan. Let me know until next time. I hope you have a great week. And always, see ya.